Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Baptist Health for Her Women's Wellness Wednesday. My name is Lisa, and I'll be the host for the series. I will be joined every third Wednesday of the month at noon by some wonderful experts and physicians that will take us through a deep dive into health and wellness in various topics relating to women. This series was designed to help you to learn more ways to live your best healthy life. So let's get started today and uh, with our, our topic, which is plant forward Thanksgiving recipe. I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Jenna Braddock. She's been with us numerous times. Hi, Jenna. And she's um, been speaking on various topics um, the past at least year and a half, right, Jenna? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I think it's almost been two years now. Which is I know, awesome. so cool. She's a registered dietitian, personal trainer behind Make um, Healthy Easy, and an author of two cookbooks. So let's um, get started. So I'm excited to be doing this today. This is my first um, cooking demonstration with Jenna. And she is going to be using um, one of her recipes from the Easy Cooking for Two cookbook. There you go. And <laughs> she'll be she'll be making le um, spiced lentils and acorn squash. And I was talking to Jenna today that I can't believe that I loved acorn squash, and mm -hmm. it's taking me, me years to make one. And yeah. I, I don't know why, I, you know, I guess he had to give me that that nudge. <laughs> well, I'm glad. And, and that brings up a good point. And the reason I chose this particular recipe for our cooking demo, besides being fall flavors, is acorn squash and lentils are two very common ingredients. You'll always find them at the grocery store pretty much year round. But if you're not familiar or you didn't grow up eating them, you probably didn't think twice about them. But they're affordable, they're super healthy, and can be made really delicious. And this recipe is super easy. It is six ingredients, very hands-off. And I thought this would be a great option for a plant-forward side dish for your Thanksgiving. Or if you're having someone who is plant-based in their eating, this will cover all the bases for them as well. So if you are ready to get started, we will do this. Let me ask you, Jenna, why plant-based recipes? What's the help? Sure. Yeah, well, the research is starting to become stronger and stronger that people who have more plant-based foods, and we're talking all the things, not just fruits and vegetables, but fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, beans, nuts, seeds, have a stronger protection against many of the chronic diseases that most Americans face. And we still find year after year when we collect data on national samples that most Americans aren't eating enough fruits and vegetables. They're not getting enough whole grains mm -hmm. or beans or nuts. And so this is a great emphasis for all of us, whether you'd consider yourself completely plant-based or not. Really, all of us should be looking to eat more plants in our diet. I know. Um, back in May, we did the Blue Zone series. Right. And I know, Jenna, you were a part of that. And I learned so much about it with the with the five societies throughout the world and the mm -hmm. highest prevalence of centurions and the, the nine pillars. And I know that one of the pillars is plant based. Mm -hmm. What is it? At least 90 percent of their diet right. is plant based. Right. And I know for some people that's really achievable and very motivating. And I would certainly encourage that. But again, I just go back to all of us can eat a little bit more plants. We would benefit from it. Mm -hmm. It's not that complicated. When you lean on easy recipes like this, or you get comfortable making lentils or can utilize winter squashes because they're so easy to cook and they really make it delicious as well as versatile. So That's let me show you these big acorn squashes here. I have two sizes. <laughs> This one is massive. I mean, this is like a, a kid's basketball size. I was really surprised. Um, and then I have one that's a little bit smaller. So I got these from different places. So I just wanted to show neither of these are, are wrong choices here. But I personally like a little bit smaller because it's mm -hmm. going to be easier to cut. But if this is all you have, this is totally fine. One little trick, if it's tough and you can't get through that skin, is you can just heat it in the microwave for about a minute. That'll soften that outer... Uh, shell just a little yeah. bit enough to make it easier to chop up. 
So I'm going to leave the big one away and I'm going to focus on our little guy here just because I think that's a little bit better for us. And I'm going to show you here. So this has natural ridges in it. And we're going to try to kind of mimic those ridges here. Now, you want to be careful because this is not a stable vegetable when you cut. So have a nice, strong knife and a good, safe grip. And we're just going to first cut it down in half. Now, one of the things you had asked me to prepare on, which I thought was actually a really good question, is what's the difference between winter and summer squash? So I learned something new for this, too. So summer squash, they harvest much earlier, younger and the skin's real tender and you eat the seeds. Winter squash you harvest later, so we have a more tough uh, exterior and we scoop out these seeds. We don't, they're not edible or you'd roast them or cook them in order to eat them. The nice thing about winter squashes though is they have a much longer shelf life, so they don't go bad as long. But we do wanna scoop these seeds out. So I just got a bowl here and a spoon and I'm just gonna scoop out, let me get a little bit more under, these seeds and they come out pretty easily. Now, if you like the seed roasting, you can certainly roast these in there. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to ditch them. And it smells amazing. It has such a good festive smell to it, I think. And so we're just going to take all these out. It's going to make it a little cleaner to cut as well. All right, so there go our seeds. I'm going to put this to the side because we're done with this. And now I have a nice flat, stable surface to cut. So that's also the nice thing is that first cut that's a little crazy. And I'm going to cut this into three to four wedges following the lines, the natural lines of the vegetable. And you'll see it's a lot easier to cut now too. So I have these nice little wedges. Um, and this is the nice thing about using a little bit smaller fruit as well is that you have these nice little individual serving sizes of the squash. You make it look so easy. <laughs> well, this one cut really nicely. I will be uh, honest there. That one made it super nice. But it is really important to have a nice sharp knife. People are afraid of sharp knives, but sharper can be much safer. So one thing I always do before the holidays is I get my knife sharp, sharpened so that we're ready to roll on the big day, which is Thanksgiving. That's good. All right, so my oven is set to 425. So we're gonna take this to a little bit higher temperature because I want it to cook quicker. Most of the recipes in my book are 30 minutes or less. Now, if you want this to go a little bit slower because it's Thanksgiving and you've got time, you can cook it at a slower or a lower temperature, especially if you've got other stuff in there. Or you can also do these in the slow cooker over several hours and that will soften it, which is nice. So the first thing I'm going to do to prepare my pan for baking is I'm going to put about a fourth a cup of vegetable broth in there. And really, it's just to cover the bottom and to keep them from burning while they're in the oven. And it'll help steam them just a little bit and keep that flesh tender. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going to set these in if I, best I can to be flesh side up, skin side down. So, you know, even using a smaller pan for this little guy would probably be better, but it'd be perfect if I had two whole ones going in. So the best of your ability, kind of set them up right like so. And then the only thing we're going to add for flavor is a tablespoon of maple syrup. Now, this is optional. You don't have to do it. But I love this dish because it's sweet and savory. So acorn squash will get a little bit more sweeter as it bakes, and this will really bring that out. Um, and I love maple syrup. I'll just confess that flavor is delicious to me. And when we pair it with our lentils that are going to be spiced, it's just a really nice balance. And if we're talking about a holiday dish, it's nice to have it taste special. And this helps it do it. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of this maple syrup on each of these pieces along that flesh best I can. And then you can always flip these halfway through the cooking process because that Maple syrup is going to get in the, the broth there, and it's just going to be really delicious. All right, and so that is it for prep to go into the oven. So that could not be easier. So I'm going to put this in the oven behind me, and this is going to bake for about 25 minutes. Check it here or there. It may need a few extra minutes depending on your oven, but um, I'll show you what it looks like cooked. We're looking for it to get uh, tender as well as a little brown on the top. So I'm going to put that in. Let me set my timer because I do not want to forget. Jenna, will the vegetable broth, will it soften up the skin so then you can eat the skins without a problem? It'd be good. That's a great question. So I find, yes, you can eat the skin, 
The bottom line, yes. And I find that it really kind of depends on the actual acorn squash, how tender it gets mm -hmm. while it's cooking. So these are these wedges will be really easy to just eat the flesh out if the skin doesn't get quite tender enough. But the goal is that it does tenderize enough and you can just cut it with a knife and have the whole piece. But either way is kind of fine. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's our acorn squash. It's gonna be done in about 25 minutes. We'll have the magic of television, but in the meantime, I want to just show you how to prep the lentils. So I'm going to have a small stock pot here and I have, I wanted to keep the lentils in the bag. I'm going to pull this underneath. This bag of lentils cost, I think, under $2 and this would be multiple meals. Um, so it's very easy to find. And lentils are phenomenal nutrition food. Um, it is a great source of fiber. If you can see here, we got seven grams. You probably can't see it. Eight grams of protein. So one of the reasons to include this in your diet is because it is such a great plant-based source of protein as well as fiber. It's very filling. And one of the reasons I chose brown lentils as opposed to red or pink lentils is because I have found brown lentils hold their texture better when you cook. So if you want the mushier, softer lentil, then go with a red one. But if you like the lentils to keep their shape and have that little more firmer texture, brown is the way to go. And I find most people like that. They see the mushy lentils and they're like, ooh, that confirms everything I thought about lentils. <laughs> but when you use the brown one, that texture is actually really enjoyable and has a chew to it, which right. if we're going plant-based and we want some texture to our food is really nice. So I'm going to use three fourths of a cup here. And um, again, these, the portions in my cookbook are for two. That's one of the nice perks about it, but it's also incredibly easy to double, triple, whatever you need. So you can see for this, this is, you know, technically two portions, but all you have to do is roast a little more squash, double the lentils, and you have a much bigger portion. And it's really easy to do that. So this is going in, you'll see I have a few red lentils mixed in there because I took it from my personal stash there. Uh, but I'm going to now add more vegetable broth. So this is one and three quarters cup here. Mm -hmm. And I really like to cook my beans, my legumes, my beans or my grains in a broth. In this case, I'm sticking vegetarian and getting in a veggie broth, but I just find it adds really nice flavor without any extra work. So it's just one of my little kitchen secrets that I use um to add extra flavor without making anything more complicated and if you are not a vegetarian and you make this with a chicken broth you'll actually add a little bit of protein more protein to it as well so that's it that's all we're going to do here and i'm going to put this on the stove i'm going to bring it to a boil for first reduce the heat down to a simmer cover it and cook for about the same amount of time that my uh, squash is finishing up in the oven. Somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes is what it takes, depending on these. Um, it may be done even in as little as 15 minutes. So you want to watch it a little bit. One thing too with lentils, if you open it up and see it getting a little dry, just add a little bit more stock to it and that that's okay. You don't want it to totally dry out because it'll burn. So let me get this on the stove. It's so interesting. It, um, I was telling Jenna before too, is that I have never made lentils until now. It's mm -hmm. ridiculous. And it was so easy. It really was. Yeah. Well, I will confess, I don't think I got into lentils, but like maybe a year or two ago, it might even have been for my cookbook where I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do this. And it really is something that you're like, well, why didn't I do this before? It's, mm -hmm. it's so great. I know. And it's pretty. It's you know, and when you do use some of the other colors, I think it is. It's just. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, through the power of television, I already have our ingredients out of the oven. And I'm going to show you what they look like, as well as how I would plate this to put it on the Thanksgiving table. So certainly you can just dish it up and put it onto their plates but I like using a rectangle plate like this to serve almost everything because it just always makes food taste beautiful. But you'll see here, we've got round edges here and just some nice caramelization, which looks great. Um, and so the idea here is to layer the 
um, squash down first and then just spoon the lentils over it. Um, and then if you want to get fancy, you can even garnish it with like a nice herb. So I'm going to take these off. And I will say just kind of feeling this one out, this skin feels still kind of tough. Mm -hmm. And so I would eat, scoop it out as I eat it, which it should come out of that skin really easily. So trying to be, you know, a little design forward here. I'm just going to line them up so they're pretty. They look like little boats, like so. And then I have my cooked lentils here. And we're just going to jazz these up a little bit. So you can see that they're green here. There'll be a nice contrast with this beautiful yellow. So we're going to add just two spices here. You can certainly add different ones that you like, uh, but this is just as a nice little warm, festive flavor to it. So the first is nutmeg. So I'm going to use a ground nutmeg here. And since this is just a small amount, I'm doing a fourth a teaspoon. And nutmeg's a strong spice. So taste before you add more. But nutmeg is a spice that is responsible or gives that warming feel to the back of your throat. Um, that's just kind of comforting and soothing. So that'll be really nice. Then the other little surprise we're using here is ground cardamom, and we're just using a little pinch of it. Now this is a spice that almost has like an orange aroma to it. Oh, it makes you think holidays to me. And usually it's one you see more around the holidays. So I would suggest buying a small bottle of it if you can, because mm -hmm. it's not commonly used, but we're just gonna use a pinch. So I'm literally gonna take a pinch Sprinkle this in, and then we're gonna stir that up. So we're, we're seasoning this after we cook it, just so we don't lose or cook out the flavor of those spices. And they're just the way we want them. Okay, so then back to our serving tray here, and we're just gonna spoon these beautiful lentils down the center. You see, it starts to look just a little fancier. No, I like that. I'm always trying to make vegetables look fancy. I know. Yeah, I know. Especially, it when, looks it comes, especially when it comes to the holidays, because we want our plants on our table, but we also mm -hmm. want them to look and taste delicious and festive. So, And you can put as much as you want on here, and you can also put some along the side if you like. And so this is this is our beautiful dish then if you can get a close up and see it and again if it was the holidays i'd probably sprinkle maybe a little rosemary on top or just a little parsley for a pop of right. color just to make it look beautiful but then you just serve it with a spoon you put your little squash bow on your plate and you're ready to roll so i hope you guys consider making this delicious recipe for your holidays we're gonna make the uh, recipe available to you and certainly check out my cookbook. But also this is a great weeknight dinner. If you're busy, mm -hmm. it covers all your, place, your, your, your places that you need. You got your veggies, you got your high fiber, you got your protein, you got your yum factor in there. So this can be a really easy dinner, especially to like throw on the stove in the oven, go take a shower, chill out, and then dinner's ready and it's ready to go. Exactly, wow. That looks lovely. Thanks. Thank you. And I hope you're enjoying your lentils too, Lisa. I am. I am. Thank you. So, wow. All right. I want to thank everyone for joining us for this cooking demo, spiced lentils with acorn squash. It's a great idea, right, for to, to introduce more plant-based recipes to your family, to your friends, and especially during the holidays, right? Um, stay tuned for next um, next month, December 15th. We're going to have our next um, For Her Women's Wellness Wednesday. It will be at noon, um, December 15th. So please join us. And we are fortunate, again, because we're going to be joined by Jenna. And we're going to be doing, she's going to be showing us another fantastic plant-based recipe for the holidays. So... Thanks, I Jenna. Wait. My Thank pleasure. You. Happy right. holidays, everybody. Thank you. Please take care and see you guys next month. Bye.